Okay, good day, big girl, guitar hoser, how's it going? Guess it's time to dust off some of these tools that I only half-ass know how to use and uh, get something built around here. I've been playing a lot of bass lately, and I've been thinking I need more basses because I've only got, um, I got about 10 around here. I need more basses. You gotta, you gotta have more bass. But you know bass, it's always the same shit over and over again. And I keep thinking of other styles of basses that I like that I never see. One of the big ones that I always think of is the EB2, right? Which is the 335 shaped bass with the mud bucker on it. I keep thinking of some of the variants of the EB2s I've been seeing over the years. And you know, one of the most iconic ones that I've ever seen is Peter Hook. Uh, when he was playing with New Order and to this day, he's using this custom built 335 shaped body bass with a long scale neck in Yamaha Electronics. And I'm like, that would be cool to have something like that. Let's try building something like that. So that's what I'm making, man. The software that comes with my CNC is kind of eh. So instead of being able to import this drawing, I had to trace around it. Used to doing that in Apple Works over the years until I finally get a plan of something that I think is going to work. So the body is fur. It's a massive piece of fur there. Fur is easy to work with. It was cheap, especially when you're in thickness size like that. The top is maple. I just lucked out, found these things. $5.99 a pound. Those are rough sanded to 80. This guy's rough sanded to 180. Now, there's a bit of a cup in this one, so I'm going to have to flatten that bit over there. I'll have to do that the old-fashioned way. So we introduced some steam to it. I bought this setup at Stu Mac for 250 bucks. Then on to the biggest, flattest surface that I've got, which is my old dirty deep freeze, a couple extra body blanks on it. There's this saying that's going on online now where people are talking about Home Depot Luthery. You know those pre-war Martins, pre-war Gibsons that are worth so much fucking money, it's unbelievable? They didn't have Luthery supply stores to go to. Your buddy Leo there bought his wood at Fullerton Lumber, which was much more of a building supply place than a fine wood place. So no fancy there. Same way the Greeks would have done it. Okay, the wood's trimmed down, loaded onto the Shipoko. Frankly, this would be faster if I was using like a plunge router and I don't know, a bandsaw. This takes time. You know, if I like this plan, if this works well, then I can repeat this multiple times. That's the biggest advantage we're going with CNC. Let's make some wood chips. That's the hollow on the front done, uh, and you can see how it comes off. You're seeing tooling marks all over the place, but this is hidden. Who cares? That would sand away real easy anyways. The one problem with fur, and you probably notice it in that, is that it chips. This is literally like one of, one of the last passes that came through on this cavity is all this. Um, which leads to issues like that, which I hope doesn't bite me on the ass when I'm finishing this. Um, here's the flip side. This stuff gets fallen and milled approximately 1,500 kilometers away from where I live. Mahogany near source is about 5,500, so you figure out the price. This is about 40 bucks, maybe. Oh. We're cut through. We have little tabs holding it in place, made them quite a bit thicker than I normally do. Uh, got a little close back here. This is what I mean by that chipping. Just tears the shit out of that stuff. So I'm going to have to carefully take this outside and sand it, and then we can glue that maple top on.
staple cut. Uh, just cutting out the parts that I need to cut. Uh, this has tabs so I can cut this free. I'll flip this over, cut through on the body uh, using where it was cut on the fur. Just because if I try to cut front and back, I'm worried the alignment's going to be out. Uh, so I'm going to set this fucker free. So there she be. Uh, we've rounded over the corners, sanded the whole thing to 220. Uh, freaking joint split open. Not much I can do about that. This is the softest fur I've built a guitar out of yet. I built about a dozen guitars out of fur, and this one you look at it wrong and it dings. So, good thing I'm old man punk and don't give a shit about that kind of stuff. So, I'm going to start the finishing. And I'm going to do something in finishing I've never done before. So we're going to go with semi-translucent. Try to pick up some of this wavy grain in here. I'm not into that style, but it's there. Let's try it. So there's the top. Stain, sand it back. I just washed back with a little bit of ice propyl. I'm waiting to dry. I'm uh, going to put the top coat on. No, this is not going to look like a multi-thousand dollar guitar. I'm not expecting that. I really don't want it to look like that. I just want to... I'm still questioning what this figure is coming from because I'm pretty sure that's not actually the wood here. And yeah, there's a few th sand through spots, but that was not from me taking off the black. That's the orig original sanding. So we're just going to color this off and see what happens. Just thought of something crazy to do on the back. With um, fur, when you're sanding, this grain actually is slightly raised feeling so it feels like a little roller coaster going in here i'm gonna try doing the same thing on the back for shits and giggles i'm gonna go with this bordeaux color black see-through on the front kind of wine on the back see how this works so the front is purple this is a diluted purple i was not expecting that on the back but damn that actually looks kind of funky. I like that. Laser burner, trying to burn the logo on. This thing is such a piece of shit. It's unbelievable. Took two tries, but it's on now. Okay, she's wired up. Didn't video that because you don't want to see that gong show. <laughs> Soldering's never come easy to me. I don't know why. Ran into two issues, one of which I should have realized. I keep forgetting to compensate for the back of the pots. Uh, so the shaft would come through, but the back of the pots would sit too far down. So I had to back trim that off. The other one is a bit more of a boo-boo. So the ground wire point is too far back. So, when I put the bridge on, the bridge is going to be somewhere around there. Being old man punk, I made the decision, I'll just throw a sticker there or something. It's not particularly pretty there anyways. Uh, to cover that, because if you remember where that grounding route was, it's at the wrong angle. It would need to be like that. So, complete design fuck up, but whatever. Live and learn. Back up against the wall in the tiny Canadian house again. I need a longer strap for this, or I gotta lose some fucking weight here. I don't know which. So anyways, here we go. This is hooky. So, pretty straightforward thing. DiMarzio Classic P Pickup. Got that for 50 bucks on sale. I like some of DiMarzio stuff. This, I don't mind the sound of that. Uh, we have a volume control. That's a duh. This here is, it's a capacitor with a resistor in line. As you turn it down, it is kind of a volume control, but it lets some of the mids ring out. So that's that. This is actually a treble boost because of the way the circuit works. And this is anti-clockwise and how it works. So it's all the way open.
pretty straightforward on that. This is a switch which adds another capacitor to this. Uh, it's not readily apparent most of the time when you're playing, sometimes under gain. And this is a mute, which is something I've wanted on a bass for a long time, so. So yeah, sonically it works. Um, it's quite comfortable, which really surprised me. Um, I thought it was gonna be a lot neck heavier than it is. It actually balances really well. Uh, the shape looks bitchin', I gotta say. And... Sonically, I'm into it. It's a little beefier than what I wanted, but uh, Beefy's always good, isn't it? So that's what I made, man. I made Hooky. Now, yeah, there's boo-boos, that's for sure. I'm still gonna have to fart with the electronics and stuff. It actually works really, really well, so I'm impressed by that. I'm quite happy. Fun little thing to have in the arsenal. So if you dug that video, you learned something from it, like, subscribe, share, all that shit that I don't have time for because I'm an antisocial prick and I'm not social. Do my sociality for me. See if I care. So as I stated before, I'm doing these videos on this channel because I was doing the instrument videos on my commercial channel. Nobody was watching them. So I've got them on this channel now. And hopefully the two dozen people who are interested watch them and learn something. This isn't like a lot of these channels where it's like, you know, suddenly somebody who's never built a guitar and they got some PRS thing because they're not showing you the footage where they took to somebody else. So this is realistic, okay? I am a wood hacker, but you know what? In the end, I got instruments that make sounds, instruments that make music, makes me happy. Hopefully you get a giggle out of it. Big Earl, guitar oser, thanks a lot for watching. Have yourself a good day, eh?